so wonderful here. What's this? A seagull. Constantine shot it. It's a beautiful bird. Oh, how I don't want to leave. Try to convince Irina Nikolaevna to stay. What are you writing? Just making a note. An idea came to me. An idea for a short story. Once upon a time, there lived a young girl on the shore of a lake. A young girl like you. She loved the lake like a seagull and she was happy and free, like a seagull. But one day by chance, there came a man who saw her and for lack of anything better to do, destroyed her just like the seagull. I don't remember. I don't remember. I don't remember! I don't remember. I don't remember. like this house. It's like a maze. 26 enormous rooms. Everybody's scattered all over the place. You can't find anyone. One can accustom oneself to ill health. Come what may, but I simply cannot bear the ways of country life. I have the feeling that I've fallen off the earth onto some other planet. Sit down, sit down, please, ladies and gentlemen. invited you here, ladies and gentlemen, to announce that the Inspector General is coming. How
However, all joking aside, ha ha ha, this is a serious matter. Ladies and gentlemen, I have gathered you here to request your aid and advice and to know your infant kindness. I hope that I shall have them both. I am a scholarly man, a man of letters, and have always been a stranger to the practical affairs of life. Without the guidance of knowledgeable people like you, I cannot imagine managing this. I look to you, Ivan Petrovich, as well as you, Ilya Ilyovich. You, Mama. The fact is that Mamet Ones Una Nox. That is to say, we are all in the hands of God. I am old and ill, and for that reason, I find it an opportune time to settle my affairs pertaining to my property, insofar as they concern my family. My life is already over. I am not concerned with myself, but I have a young wife and an unmarried daughter. To continue living in the country will no longer be possible for me. We are not meant to live in the country. To live in town, however, on the allowance we receive from this estate, it is also not possible. Let us assume then that we shall sell the poorest. That would be an extraordinary measure, one that we could not take every year. Such measures must be found, therefore, as would guarantee us a steady, more or less fixed yearly income. I have thought of one such measure, and I have the honor of presenting it to you for your consideration. Details aside, I shall pose it to you in general outline form. Our estate yields a profit on the average of no more than 2%. I propose to sell it. If the money we earn is converted into interest bearing securities, then we shall receive from four to five percent. And I believe that there will be even a surplus of several thousand, which will allow us to buy a small dacha in Finland. Wait a minute. Evidently, up until now, I haven't had a drop of common sense. Up until now, I had the stupidity to assume that this estate belongs to Sonia. My late father bought the estate as a dowry for my sister. Up until now, I have been so naive. Imagine, it was my understanding we were not living under Turkish law, and I thought that the estate had passed down from my sister to Sonia. Yes, the estate belongs to Sonia. Who is disputing that? Without Sonia's consent, I could not, in effect, sell it. It's for her very sake that I'm proposing to do so. This is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Either I'm going out of my mind, or... or else. I've wasted my life. I am talented, brilliant, courageous. If I had lived a life, I might have been a Schopenhauer, a Dostoevsky. What am I saying? I'm raving. I'm going out of my mind. Matushka, I'm in despair. Matushka. Ladies and gentlemen, will someone tell me what is happening here? Take this madman away from me. I cannot stay under the same roof with him. He lives there, right next to me almost. Let him move to the village, to a separate wing, or else I'll move out myself. I cannot remain in the same house with him. My child, it hurts so much. Oh, if only you knew how much. We shall live through the endless, endless row of the days, the long evenings, we shall patiently bear the ordeals that fate has in store for us. We shall toil for others now and in our old age. We shall know no rest. And when our hour comes, we shall die humbly. And there beyond the grave, we shall say that we've suffered 
that we've wept, that life was bitter, and God will take pity on us. And you and I, uncle, darling uncle, we shall see a radiant life, a beautiful, blissful life. We shall rejoice, and we shall look back on our present unhappiness with tenderness, with a smile, and we shall rest. I believe it, Uncle Vanya. I believe it fervently, passionately. Thank you.